It's coming into the studio. Uh, good evening, by the way. I should have said that in the, right up front, but uh, coming into the studio, um, it's definitely getting a bit of that winter feel to it. I uh, don't know what it's like uh, in your part of the world, but definitely in Johannesburg, there is that winter sort of feel setting in. Uh, we're doing something totally different this evening. Uh, we're going to be talking about this is the. These are the two biggest words that we've used on the show since we started it. <laughs> Organizational dynamics. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why in, uh, in just a moment, because we, uh, we've got in the studio Greg Shankland, who is a director and uh, a partner at a company called Blueprints, and also Jill Hofmeyer, who's the uh, head of business dynamics and a director at Deloitte Consulting. The, this came about as a result of um, something that was sent to me by an old mate of mine who I met about, uh, about 12 years ago and did some work with at, at Blueprints, the place that Greg's from. And he sent me a, a book and it's on the front it says, My Fellow Citizens, and on the back it says, Thank you, God bless you, and God, God bless the United States of America. And I thought, what the heck is this about? And I went through it and basically it was President Obama's inaugural address to America and what Blueprints did is they went through the address, they identified the highlights of it and what his thinking was and they came up with what they call a formula for America. We'll get into it and I'll, I'll tell you a bit about it and get them to explain and, and we'll look at organizational dynamics uh, as a result of that. Uh, but what really uh, amazed me was the, the, the letter that accompanied it from the White House. Just says, the White House, Washington, we would like to extend our deepest thanks for your kind gift. Your thought, uh, thoughtfulness and generosity are much appreciated. Wada, 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 wada. Signed, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. And I thought, okay, that's quite impressive. To be able to get a letter from the White House is, is, is an impressive thing to do. Now, guys, thank you for taking time out to join us this evening. Thank you. Let's go through this before we get on to organizational dynamics. Greg, please explain to us what this formula thing is about, because I've, I've been through it with you. Mm -hmm. But explain to everybody how, how you, wh what you do and how you get there. Let's see if I can do this without using big words as you describe. I right. Think it's, it's very simple, it actually, is that you know, organize, organizations have a personality and a character. Um, and it's, it, people view it as something very fluffy. And because of that, leaders kind of tend to avoid it you know, or, or, you know, and they focus on the rational things about the organization because that's usually what they're measured on. They're measured on the finances. They talk about their strategy and these things are easy to describe. They're linear, they're rational. But the way people, the way organizations behave are just the way people behave because they're just collections of people. So they have a personality and a character. And that's, you know, where the blueprint comes in. It was, it was an easy way to help people, uh, help organizations describe their personality and their character and link it to their strategy and their performance and how they, so how they perform. Um, so the, the, the book for Obama was just a simple marketing tool really for us to show people you know, how you can take um, people's words, you know, what they say about their business, you know, in this case what he said about the United States, uh, and turn that into a, a formula for, su for success as we call it. And we, do, we describe it as a formula simply because it enables us to uh, get the idea across that it's easily measured, uh, which, is, which is something you want to do with, with culture. So it makes it easier in that sense. And we use, uh, uh, people will hate uh, their, their maths from school days, but we use a very simple you know, algeb algebraic formula, but really all that's behind it is that elements in the top line above the, you know, in the numerator are things that are good for business, and elements you know, below the, uh, you know, the line in the equation, the, the uh, denominator, are bad for business. And it's you know, no more complicated than that. So it's a very simple way of helping organizations align their organization's culture with what it is they're trying to achieve, their purpose or their strategy. So, for example, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going through this very quickly because I don't want to get too tied up with the, the American model here. But um, on the top line things, things you must strive for are, in terms of his speech, things that you identified were that they should be looking at building infrastructure, at dignity, do our business uh, in the light of day, um, effective care, equality, diversity. Bottom line, things are like 
corruption, deceit, cynics, uh, conflict and discord, apologizing for their way of life. And, and exactly. Those so the top are the line ones. are things you want to do more of and do them better. Things in the bottom line are things you want to do less of. And we keep okay. it as simple as that. Right, now we understand a little bit about this formula. You've worked with these guys uh, before. But before we started the show, you threw a, um, a, a little curved ball in here um, where, where you said that things are shifting now mm. from the, the people to the, the, relationship. the relationship. That's right, Jeremy. I mean, if you look at um, certainly the work we do with organizations, the, the mantra has been people are our greatest asset. Um, there's been a tremendous focus on talent management over the last decade. If you look at talent management, what it essentially does, though, is look at the potential and performance of the individual, so the skill and motive of the individual. Uh, our belief and our understanding in working with organizations is it's much more, and people are realizing this, about the relationship between individuals. Yes. So the power is not in what I bring, but the power is in what you and I bring in our interaction and what results from that. So I would assert that that, that mantra, people are our greatest assets, will, will change to relationships are our greatest assets. Now, you're nodding away here. Yes, so uh, and first, again, there's, there, you know, there, are, there are lots of studies out there at the moment, lots of books you know, about culture um, you know, and, and these types of things, and, and showing the strong correlation between how groups of people behave in an organization and organizational um, performance. Um, it's, it's becoming you know, quite a, you know, it's a science these days. It's, you mm. know, even though it's soft and fluffy, what it is that people need to do to make these things happen in the organization are actually very well described. And they're actually, you know, conceptually, they're quite straightforward. Um, you know, people need to understand where it is they're going. Usually, you know, it's a purpose or a vision. Um, they need to communicate, 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 talk about what it is we want to be doing. Um, they need to uh, walk the talk, actually you know, act as they believe they should behave, and you need to measure. You know? And those, are the, those, are, you know, those four basic steps, you know, uh, you know, most organizations like ourselves you know, might make it slightly more you know, uh, sophisticated than that, but really you know, those are the basics uh, um, behind it. And the simpler you can keep it, the better it is. Even, even in a small business, you do need that relationship building um, between, let's say, the owner and, and the, the employees. In fact, it's a lot easier in a small business. I mean, again, our experience has shown that the, and Deloitte talks about three factors important in, in, in effective organization dynamics, which is your directional intensity, the degree to which people are aligned and clear around a direction, your common interpretation, the degree to which people understand what it is we need to do, the steps we need to take to get there, and your shared identity which is the degree of loyalty and allegiance you have to, to the organization entity. And research has shown it is very often a lot easier, size does count. So the larger the organization, the harder it is to build a common allegiance to, to the, the bigger state. So I would say it's absolutely important for small businesses and actually a lot easier because they've got a natural work group um, and, a, and, a, and a, a size that they can really engage meaningfully um, with employees. How do you once you've got into a company, um, because you, you deal mainly with larger corporations, I yes. would imagine. Once you've got in there, how do you then, once you've got the formula in place, how do you start getting that into the culture of the company? How do you make it part of the culture? Well, if, in, in fact, I mean, you know, this, you know, this is really, of course, the uh, clients that do that themselves, you know, rather than us. The, the, the blueprint is a tool to help them uh, to help them do that, um, but it, but it is very you know, it, it is very important. I mean, I think you can look at this from uh, you know, from uh, a few different angles, but all all of them at the core, whether you're talking internal branding, whether you're talking employee engagement, which is probably the most popular kind of uh, you know, theme out there at the moment, or whether you're talking high performance culture, you know, all of these things have at their core exactly the things that Jill has, des has just described. This common understanding of where it is we're trying to go. And that's what the blueprint actually uh, gives the organization. But the organization then does need to integrate that into its normal management processes. So they need to integrate it from the top, if you'd like to just, you know, think of it in, in those terms, so that each uh, manager of each part of the business you know, has their, um, 
reporting and scoring on their blueprint as they're, as they're moving forward, along with improvement suggestions from their people that they create at the same time as they score. Mm. Um, the, they can tie it in at the individual level, so it's very easy for people to tie their blueprint into their, uh, their ordinary performance management system by saying, how do I connect to the blueprint? And what is my role in delivering that blueprint? And that, that actually is the strongest, the single strongest motivator of individual behavior is how that individual connects to the organization's um, purpose. Having, okay. having, having been through the process, because uh, as I said earlier in the, in the show, um, I, I was part of a, uh, one, of, one of your blueprint courses. Um, Jill, the, the thing that, that fascinated me about it was that once you've got this, and I suppose it, it doesn't have to be your blueprint, it can be any, any f sort of formula that you apply in organizational management within a, a company, no matter how small or big it is, once you've got that in place, it takes all the emotion out of making decisions. Because you can go to, in this case, the blueprint and say, let's make a decision on whether we hire this person. Do they fit in? Have they got the right attitude? Do they fit into that? Do they fit into that? Do they do this? Do they do that? Are they bottom, uh, do they have bottom line issues? And it just takes out all the emotions in it. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things in, in business is, is those emotional decisions that you take where you should be standing back and being absolutely unemotional about them. I, I agree. I think we should be careful not to say we want to remove emotion altogether out of business. I mean, part yes, of fact, the yes. blueprints formula is about heightening the, the, the pool of shared the meaning and strengthening actually, yeah. the emotional connection. But I would agree with you that it, in the areas where emotion can impede your decision making, it does. It absolutely provides a... A, a checklist to, 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 to guide us in decision making. We're talking about organisational behaviour. It's a bit of a different show this evening uh, and it's the first time, uh, I must admit, and I'm really, really proud of it, that we've had a lady on the show who says that size does count. <laughs> um, we'll be back with uh, Jill and with Greg in just a moment.